Uh, so I'm Emily Porter. I'm the Digital Repository Program Manager here at the Emory Libraries. And I'm here with Brad Watson, who's from our software engineering team. And we're going to talk about improving Hyrax bulk imports by some customizations we've done with bulk racks, and specifically talking about ingesting digitized books in Hyrax 3 and bulk racks. Um, also just wanted to give a thank you to the program committee. We're kind of a last minute addition um, due to a cancellation, and we are very glad to be here with you all. Next slide, please. So I'm going to talk a little bit about our digitized book ingests. Um, and then kind of reviewing this presentation and hearing some of the other conversations uh, this week at Sambera Connect, I really wanted to mention also that this what we're talking about today could really apply to any kind of work that has many file sets attached to it. Um, and in our case, um, in order to meet some of our preservation goals for our repository, we have a local customization on our Hyrax application that allows us to store multiple files per file set. And for our book objects, when they're digitized, um, we get quite a, quite a few files for each book. And that in, can include volume level files. Uh, we always have a PDF for the entire volume. Um, depending on the output of the process, we may also have an OCR file for the entire volume and a METS file for the entire volume. And then we also have page level files. So for each page, we store an image, typically a TIFF, um, and that's what we use in the Universal Viewer and our IIIF manifests. We also have a plain text output, and in some cases, an Alto XML file. And because we have all these, we really want to keep them. Um, and we're hoping to use these uh, as we start to get uh, working with full text search, for example. Uh, and on the right side of my screen, I'm, I'm showing you, uh, this is an example of what our a file set page looks like in our application for a, a book object. And you can see um, the TIFF file is stored as kind of the preservation main file. Uh, then we have that XML file for the Alto, which is the OCR data, and then the plain text as well. And so we're kind of talking about today is um, roughly defined as a typical book object. Obviously, books can vary quite a bit. Um, but when we're talking about imports, um, where we have really struggled with ingest is when a book has more than 100 pages, for example. Um, so kind of looking back at our averages over ingest for the last year, that more or less averages out to be about 170 file sets and approximately 500 files, um, again, with those multiple files per file set. Um, I also want to mention that our digital collection backlog for ingest uh, contains thousands of these already digitized books. So this is really something that we need to pay a lot of attention to. Next slide, please. Unfortunately, we've been stuck in the slow lane with this process. Um, the image on my right is a, an unfortunate photo of traffic on Interstate 85 going into Atlanta. Um, and this reminds me a lot of watching the sidekick queue for a very slow ingest. And I think the number of lanes is, is kind of close to our number of workers. Um, so when we're ingesting one of these book objects, that time can range from as little as three hours to as long as nine days, um, depending on, you know, again, how many file sets, how, how large the book is. And the crux of this problem is, and I'm sure that this is a pain point that many of you in the community are familiar with, um, in Hyrax and Fedora, the more file sets that get added to a work, the slower that file set attachment process takes over the course of the import. And so we've researched this for years. We've done a lot of mining of uh, prior Samvera Slack threads with other people dealing with this kind of problem. Some of the fixes that we've attempted are you know, really scaling up our server resources um, for our Hyrex server and our Fedora server. We've done some work to optimize solar. We've also done some optimization on the number of sidekick workers running concurrently and also the number of retries that happens for failed jobs. Uh, we pretty quickly realized we could only ingest one book at a time. And we still have to restart Fedora very frequently, several times a week on average. We've also been trying to upgrade our Hyrex application to the latest stable 3.x series 
in the hopes that we might benefit from some of the other upgrades that have been happening over the last couple of years. And another thing that we've done is document very detailed statistics for each ingest. And that's allowed us to really get some insight into um, trying to predict how long it's going to take to ingest a book, for example. Uh, next slide, please. So because we have these very detailed logs of our ingests, um, we're able to do some things like this graph. And I realize this may be a little hard to read, but what this is showing is kind of the correlation of um, the average file sets per hour that get processed relative to the number of file sets in the individual work. And so again, this is kind of a snapshot of book objects that have between 100 and close to 700 file sets. And you can really see this kind of the initial ingest um, for smaller books, that first, you know, anywhere from 100 to 150 is where we really, we see, you know, okay performance. But then you can see this really terrible decline in the rate of ingest, um, the, the more file sets that are attached to the work. So we, we kind of have an average maybe around 20, 25 or so for smaller books. And then it drops very far down. You can see the, the right, um, that poor little dot at the right edge of the screen, which is showing for a work that has close to 700 pages, we're only averaging about four file sets per hour. Um, so this is really unsustainable for us. And we had a little bit of time this autumn to kind of go back and brainstorm some different ideas for what we could do next. Next slide, please. And so one thing that we identified was we'd heard a lot of good things about bulk racks in the community and we wanted to give it a try and see what we could do um, relative to our customized ingest process. And I'll hand it over to Brad. Hi, um, once again, my name is Brad Watson. I'm a software engineer here with Emory Libraries. And a little bit disclaimer up front about my slides. Uh, later on, I will be venturing over to displaying code. And I know that's not pleasurable for some who are not in the tech side of things. And I will be mostly using it for just comparison. I'm mostly going to be talking about the strategy to uh, use bulk racks and how to customize bulk racks. So the code that I'm going to be displaying will only really be for um, that's highlighting where the changes have happened and how uh, the changes have happened. Um, so earlier uh, in the process, as Emily pointed out, uh, the software engineering team here uh, had a meeting to identify what the possible solutions to um, increasing the ingest rates of um, Hyrax objects uh, would be. So we basically went from a situation where what's the easiest uh, and requires the least amount of time to all the way up to what's the hardest and probably not the most probable. Uh, we've basically created a list here that you saw, you see now. Um, basically, the first one, which seemed to be the easiest, was bulk racks. And um, we also identified further down the line that we definitely need to go ahead and jump on the Hyrax upgrade, uh, which we kind of did at the same time. Um, but um, we, we realized that we needed to fo focus purely on bulk racks um, with one branch. Um, and others that proved to be more difficult and required more time was to just purely dive into the log files of our jobs to see what was failing and pointing out those failures and trying to go through a, a needle in a haystack situation to see what was truly causing our problems. Uh, onward over to um, seeing, investigating whether we need a whole different server, uh, which um, I love, I love hearing the card method uh, presentation earlier, um, as well as uh, seeing if the newer Fedora versions coming down the pipeline that are not currently in our version of uh, Hyrax would, would possibly solve our issues too. Of course, since that's in the pipeline, we couldn't really do anything with that. So we focused first on bulk racks. And, um, 
it was minimal effort. We, uh, as I, I kind of took lead on this situation and um, we do have customizations. Uh, they're mostly in the file set actor as well as the attached files to work job portions of, of the, uh, the both high racks as well as bulk racks. And we were able to get it moving and going pretty easily. Um, but we were still seeing a lot of the same issues. We were still seeing a high rate of, of failure when it came to uh, file sets being either missing, missing or orphaned. Um, derivatives and characterization were still not happening uh, just in the same way as our previous imports uh, were not happening. Um, it took multiple re-ingests to go ahead and get all the file sets that we wanted to be attached to the work in there. Um, but we also saw, saw some new uh, things coming up. Like, for example, uh, the customization was filling duplicates of the same file set into the uh, our, our curate generic work instance. And we also noticed how the file sets weren't being inputted into the work in the order that we put it on the CSV file that we used to ingest. Um, a lot of the same problems that we were having um, with our previous imp importer uh, were showing up in bulk racks. And the, the kicker of it all is that we really didn't see a huge improvement with bulk racks. But bulk racks has some uh, unexpected behavior, uh, behaviors that, and benefits that came with the installation. Um, the beauty of it, of, of it all is that they're definitely a, a database object. Uh, each entry, which includes the work as a file set, is a database object as well. And they retain um, not only details about the uh, object that it creates, like the ID as well as you know, link to the ID, uh, but it also retains errors relevant only to that entity. And we saw um, for the, you know, for, you know, we saw some errors that were popping up um, that we weren't able to locate before for kind of, for, kind of for the first time. Um, we saw that uh, the major problem uh, that was happening is that we were seeing uh, failure to lock errors, which uh, ties to the file set actor attached to work method. Um, we we're seeing a lot of those. And uh, I apologize, this is where I'm gonna go ahead and work away from the uh, slides here and go ahead and show some code. Uh, just to get a, an understanding too of the complications in this situation, I'm, I'm doing a side-by-side -side of our code here. And really all you have to really worry about is that over here, create content is a, a one piece situation. It's a one a call over to uploaded file. And that's that's how each uh that gets attached. We have a lot more uh, processing on our side to the left. This is our our code as of uh, uh, our current production curate. And this is just done for per, you know, and uh, this this is kind of what creates the the uh, the lockup as far as, uh, as what we're concerned. Um, the what we found with the and I apologize when I move things around a little bit here so I can easily access them. Apologies once more. What we saw is that we were getting a lot of these lock manager unable to acquire lock errors. And the way that bulk racks helped us in this situation is that, okay, we see this error, we're unable to acquire a lock. That means the work is getting persistently persisted to. And we need to go ahead and improve the ability for uh, the work to go ahead and be freed up to go ahead and receive each of these file sets and not 
absolutely get pounced upon so that you know the, the improvement can can help. This is kind of a um, indicator to us that we needed to work on our sidekick uh, errors. So we did. We went ahead and uh, worked with our our queue to go ahead and optimize, give it uh, the ability to go ahead and get get just the right, right amount of import files. And we improved it, but we did not eliminate the issue. We still had these lock manager errors, even after playing around with the right mix of sidekick jobs for, you know, relative to, you know, the ingest as well as the default uh, setup. And, but it, realizing that, we also saw a whole batch of other errors. And this is more of a, um, this is purely just more of a preservation event more of a, a logging situation, but it indicated to us that this wasn't working for some reason and then we would need to debug this as well. So I found out that the reason why this was happening so often is that at the time that this was being run, the file set was not aware of the work and vice versa. It wasn't properly attached at that, at that, at that moment. Which gave me a clue to something else that was throwing a bug as well, which was that the file manager was throwing an error whenever we attempted to save. And we found out that that was also tied to the fact that we were having multiple file sets, uh, a multiple of the same file sets saved into the, the work. And what we did was I just wanted to go ahead and figure out why that was happening and in the process of doing that i realized that this all this does is that it sorts the aids and it injects it into the the work it works ordered members this is doing that on the outside of the the processing that you would see here uh or, or more specifically <laughs> here uh, this it basically is doing the same thing here, but it's doing it at a level where it has knowledge of all the file sets it needs uh, to to save in there, and it's replacing those file sets in order. That made me realize something. That made me realize that the you know basically I, I wasn't understanding exactly the reason why the work wasn't being saved correctly and why the, the, the lock for the work wasn't, you know, you know, coming through in a timely fashion. This is the hardest process that the work has to do during the whole, whole, you know, the whole attached to work process. So this is the one that takes the most amount of time. And this is what's causing the stop gap in this situation. If I can go ahead and persist all of the file sets in one straight go with the file manager, why can't I go ahead and do that at the end of the import and remove this process here and allow all of the, the work, the, the, all of the, uh, the file sets to create beforehand? And I hacked after that point. I, I, I basically you know, saw whether that was possible. If I took away any persistence to the work from, from this side, uh, as far as bulk rest is, is concerned, can I go ahead and put that to the very end at the end of the whole process? And uh, this is when I'll go ahead and get back into the presentation mode. And uh, once again, I apologize, I have to move things around. Okay, there we are. So that's whenever we came to the point of, re yeah, of the realization is that there is a, the, a very end job for bulk racks. It's called the schedule relationships job. It happens after every single other piece of uh, every single other object is created and persisted and done with. Um, 
And it, and it ensures that by making sure that there's nothing else in the queue. If that's the case, why don't, why don't I hijack that procedure? Why don't I throw in a job of my own? Because the import object knows all of the file sets and its IDs, as well as the, the generic work that we created with it, why can't we just go ahead and throw everything together at the very last minute before the schedule relationships jobs truly kicks off and completes? We did that. We went ahead and worked forward, and we found beautiful results. Uh, the work that once took 11 hours to complete now takes less than an hour. Uh, we cr increased our file sets, which were all over the place everywhere, up to 192 file sets per, per hour, and that's compared to 12. And um, I don't want to go deep into the code, uh, but if you do, if, if this is something that could help you, uh, I provided a link in this slide to our current work. I do apologize up front. Currently, because we were working with two branches and two separate things at the same time, uh, it, there is an intermixed code as far as like not bulk racks install and optimization, but the gist of it is there and we have provided notes in each of our commits to kind of label this as bulk racks work. Uh, and this part, I'm going to hand back to Emily. Thank you, Brad. Um, so I just wanted to kind of show some benchmarks around our ingest testing. Um, and this kind of shows the pre and post tuning that we did on bulk racks. Um, so one thing that we did while testing bulk racks was to try to find some previously ingested book objects in our production environment um, that we had you know, statistics for and then replicate those in our test environment using bulk racks. And so the, we have, uh, let's see, six or seven works here um, and containing a book objects containing anywhere from 102 to 160 file sets. Um, and so on the, the vertical axis of the chart, this is showing kind of the total in just hours um, for each work. And the red line is our prior ingest benchmark. And the blue line is showing how long that same ingest took using bulk racks. And so you can see we, are, we got some initial um, performance gains just by using straight bulk racks. However, if you look at the last two entries on the right, you can see after we added these optimizations, um, we had a huge performance gain um, by making that modification. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and this slide is showing basically the same kind of data, but focusing on the average file sets per hour um, for these same works. Um, again, the blue line is bulk racks, and uh, the red line is our prior production ingest. And you can really see again on those last two works, just the number of file sets per hour that we were able to process and attach to a work really skyrocketed after those modifications. So we're really excited about this. Um, the fact that we can now start to do book ingest in an hour as opposed to days <laughs> is really going to help us with our, our overall pipeline. Uh, next slide, please. And finally, I, I wanted to show um, some of the modifications we made to the bulk racks UI. And I would clarify a lot of these we added just during that initial diagnostic phase because we have so many file set entries for each work. Um, it was really difficult to kind of drill down and, and figure out which ones had failed and which hadn't. Um, so one thing that we did was add this list of file set IDs. And this was really helpful while we were just trying to debug some of the problems with um, particularly the duplicate IDs showing up um, in the works members, um, even though they weren't, you know, they were just, that's just a weird indexing thing. Um, we also added a title column, and this was really helpful for me as someone who was doing a whole lot of QA on each job, trying to figure out which pages hadn't attached so that I could go prep another CSV import just for those missing file sets. 
Um, another thing we did was add a, an ID column. And this is just kind of showing you or showing us the minted ID for that particular file set so that we know that it was actually created successfully. And again, this information, um, the title and the ID, it is available in the current uh, Bullcrax interface, but you really have to kind of drill down a few steps for each individual entry. And that was just very adding up to um, quite a bit of QA time. Uh, next slide, please. And so we will wrap it up here. Uh, first, we want to send many thanks to the Bullcrax team and also a lot of Sam Varens who've helped us along the way. Uh, I want to thank our local software engineering and middleware teams for all their help support, uh, their support designing, reviewing, and testing this prototype. Um, very special thanks to Catherine Michaelis, who's our preservation program manager, for having to monitor so many of these very painful book and chests, and we hope that we're making her life easier. Um, and then as Brad has already mentioned, uh, we've got a link to our code here, um, and we hope that you'll check it out. And we'd love to hear um, comments or questions. I know we have extra time. If we don't have a lot of questions, I'm sure we can just go to a break earlier. And we, we do have plenty of time for questions. So uh, people can put them in the Q&A. That'd be great. We can give it a few, a few minutes. I know there's a lot of chatter in Slack right now. It looks like we have a couple of questions. Um, will any of this work be PR'd back to bulk racks? I think that's a great question. We're we're hoping to start attending the bulk racks interest group meetings and would love to talk to the team about that. Um, I know that this is a pretty complex um, change in some cases, so but we we'd love to talk to folks about that. Um, and. Tao has, I think, a similar question. Is this code change being put into the Hyrax code base? And I would say that's probably, again, that would be a bulk Rex change. Yeah, the, the beautiful thing about bulk Rex is that, and, and some may consider, consider this to be a, a negative, but I consider it to be a positive, is that the bulk of the, the faucet actor, um, like, sorry, the attached work to uh if yeah files to work actor is kind of brought over into the bulk racks base so you're able to go ahead and alter it while not altering your your um your base ui importing or your base importing period so i kind of personally in my opinion i kind of feel that if, if you keep this the bulk rack side uh, it would probably be a better thing. 